pretty for us. So, um, they're wanting to see you, but at the moment, at the bottom I've got nine presenters plus me, that's ten. That's the maximum you can take on a Google Hangout. So, I'm going to start just by sharing what Google Hangout is and what it is that I do. It's part of a, um, a co-education fellowship where I, as part of my inquiry, I found out that in order to really deepen my thinking, I needed to create an online space for teachers to share their learning. And so this is the outcome of that inquiry. So over the past year, I've run a hangout once a term with educators from around New Zealand. If you want to know more, you can visit Teach, and Teach Meet and Z Wiki space and you can see more about the project on there. At the end of this time, I'll show you the link. So, um, at the bottom there, I'm just going to take a screen dump of everyone here because I do this as part of um, what I do. I just take a screen dump so that people can see. Uh, Manal, are you there? Could I get you to come up, please? And um, if you can turn your microphone and introduce yourself to the audience. Kia ora everyone, um, I'm Arnel, a new entrant and year one teacher and core um, education e fellow for 2014. Um, I just want to say Teach, Meet and Z is a great opportunity for educators to share their learning and best of all it's rewindable and um, just want to say thank you to Sonia for making all this possible and well done to all the presenters um, for today um, that's going to present. Good luck to you. I can't wait to hear you. Um, have fun, everyone. Thank you, Manal. And um, as, as I discuss with you, if you mind just giving us a wave and then just taking off, because Manal is going to give us that tense camera that I can show the audience. Because around the world we've got, because again, they still they, they can't see you and they want to see you. They want to know who's here with me. So um, can I ask everybody to please turn off your cameras and turn off your sound. Basically what's going to happen is each of the presenters from around New Zealand, all educators, are going to share their session with you, share their learning with you so that you can get a small glimpse of what it's like inside their classroom. Okay, so I'm just going to activate the tent camera. Give me a second. Um, I might just get them started up because our time is right. I'll just take me a minute to fiddle with that. Um, who's our first um, presenter, please? Is that you, Justine? Hello, who's the first presenter? It's me, presenter? it's Monica. Okay, Monica. Monica can I get, Justine, can you please turn off your camera? Because what happens is that the camera takes the bandwidth. Okay, um, Monica, I'm going to get you to turn on your camera and I will um, flick that tenth camera across now. So Monica, now over to you. Please share with us what you, who you are, where you are and what your session is about. Thank you, Monica. Hi everyone, I'm Monica. I'm um, speaking to you today from the beautiful far north. And I've got a presentation on um, supporting universal design for learning with Google Apps for Education. So she's just flicking across to her presentation now for you. Thanks, Monica. Nice and clear. Okay. Well, thank you so much um, to give me the opportunity to uh, present to you at the Festival of Education. Um, I'm a Learning with Digital Technologies facilitator and I'm based in Okaiha in the far north. A universal Design for Learning is an educational framework guiding the design of flexible learning environments that can accommodate individual learning differences. It follows three principles providing multiple means of representation, the what of learning, providing multiple means of action and expression, the how of learning, and providing multiple means of engagement, the why of learning. Why should we be concerned with UDL in our classrooms? When curricula are designed to meet the needs of an imaginary average, they do not address the reality of learner variability. They fail to provide all individuals with fair and equal opportunities to learn, by excluding learners with different abilities, backgrounds, and motivations 
who do not meet the elusive criteria for average. Technologies are not the only way to implement UDL, but for this session we will focus on how effective use of technologies can make learning more accessible for more learners. The examples used are for laptops, MacBooks and Chromebooks, but similar apps are available to use on tablets. To truly support learners and their needs, technology use needs to be carefully planned into the curriculum as a way to achieve the goals. Many schools are adopting Google Apps for Education or GAF for short. A common reason is the ease with which to collaborate and to access learning 24-7. But Google and associated third-party apps and extensions can also support UDL implementation in schools. Do you have reluctant writers or students that struggle with spelling or with their fine motor skills? In the Google Chrome browser, open google.com and you can search the internet by voice. No separate installation or download are required. Do you struggle with students not reading, not being able to read your comments to their Google Docs? In the Google Chrome Web Store, look for Kaizena and install this app free. And just recently, it's also come out as an add-on within Google Docs itself. Your students want to tell a story rather than write it? Find the Drive Voice Recorder app in the Google Chrome Web Store and add it to Chrome for free. Have you used Google Forms with your students, colleagues, or parents found on community? Go to Insert and you can now select images and video to make your form less reliant on text. Your students' wonderful digital creations need a place to be showcased. How about using Blogger as a class blog, subject blog or individual student blog? This is the perfect place to give them an authentic audience outside the classroom. It's free and easy to set up and maintain. Learning about different places and countries? With Google Earth, which you can download or use as a plugin for your browser, you can explore the world visually. There are many places where you can learn more about UDL and GAF. I have included a few for you here. Thank you very much for following this presentation and please share your ways of implementing UDL with colleagues and with me. Um, thanks, Monica. Great presentation and, and it's nice and smooth and we've got a lot from it. Now, I forgot to ask the audience too, at the end of this time we're going to have a discussion with them so you can ask them some questions. So if you come up with a good question, please have it ready. Okay, um, next please. I don't have the order of events. Who's number two? Um, Monica, if you can turn off your camera please. Or shall I choose somebody? I'm number two. Kira. Okay. Kia ora, Diana, and welcome. Thank you. Okay, I Kathy, hope you're Kathy, are you timing? I forgot to introduce you all to Kathy. Kathy's our timekeeper. All right, Kathy, ready? Diana, when you're ready, tell us where you're from, and off you go. Uh, Morana, uh, I hope everybody's enjoying the festival of um, education. My name's Diana Wilkes. Uh, I work for Cognition Education. I'm just going to share my presentation now. I um, work as the assistant regional team leader of the North Learning with Digital Technologies team. And Sorry, keep going, keep going. <laughs> and I also work as a science learning hub um, facilitator. Uh, the presentation I'm sharing with you today is about how we can use digital technologies to support science learning. It is becoming uh, increasingly clear that we need a resurgence of science in the typical primary classroom. The short presentation will endeavor one main objective, and that is to suggest how digital technologies can support teaching and learning in science as both a source of content and as a tool for recording scientific thinking. A great online resource is the Science Learning Hub. It is managed by the University of Waikato and it's funded by the Ministry of Business, Innovation and Employment. 
It was created by New Zealand educators and scientists for use in years 2 to 10. It connects learners with researchers, enabling authentic learning experiences. So what can we find in the Science Learning Hub? Contexts. The contexts are at the heart of the hub. Each explores a major theme or idea and provides a gateway to related content and explorations. Then the science stories section is what you are after. Here, in this area of the Science Learning Hub, mm -hmm. the nature of science is unpacked and some myths are debunked. What is the nature of science? It is a way of thinking and it is the overarching and unifying strand in the New Zealand science curriculum document. So what else can digital technologies do to support science teaching and learning? Well, they can enable us to support science learning as tools that can record and rewind scientific thinking. Digital technologies allow us to capture investigations in real time, record our wonderings and explanations, and then share with others using web tool tools and various iPad apps. You can see some of these tools listed here. Ultimately, digital technologies can enhance teaching and learning science in so many ways. They enable ubiquitous access to resources, allowing an open curriculum. They leapfrog learners into complex knowledge by making abstract concepts more visible, and they empower citizen science by connecting learners with the global science community. To conclude, let's remember that science should really be about cultivating curiosity. It should be about opportunities to see, think, and wonder, to predict, observe, and explain. Digital technologies can empower us as teachers and learners to question the world around us. Lastly, if you would like to come to one of our free Science Learning Hub workshops, please contact me at dianawilkesatcognition.com, sorry, at cognition.co.on. Dot NZ um, to register. Thanks for watching, and there are some useful links um, here that you can see um, if you're interested in learning more about how mm. science can help you. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Diana. <laughs> now you've got Kathy there. Kathy is our timekeeper. They've only got three minutes, that's all they're allowed. Um, and if they go so thank you, Diana. You're just on, just a wee bit over, but that's fine. I said a little bit over is fine too. Got a little bit of Sorry. time. Sorry. Thank you. And after we will have an um, opportunity for our audience to ask questions from you. Okay, um, Justine, are you ready for us? No, it looks like you're still off. Okay, I'm going to go on to Miles. Miles, can we have you up now, please? For Justine, she looks like she's having technical problems. Yep, I just get myself sorted out. Yep. He's coming in from um, farming community in our, our Aroa um, school. Am I saying that right, Mom? Um, it's it's Aroa, Aroa school. Okay. okay. So for those of you who know your South Taranaki geography, and I'll just bring it up. Just the arrow button on the right-hand side there, Miles, the play. Yes. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yeah, we can. We're fine. All right. Off oh. you go, Mom. And Kathy, get that timer going. Yes, and I'll, I'll watch out for that death rattle at the end. Um, hello, everyone. My name's Miles Webb. Um, I'm NZY Caro on Twitter. Um, currently working at Aroa Primary School in Taranaki as a deputy principal when I started this position um, earlier this year. Uh, we're a full primary school of nearly 200 students. Uh, we're located in South Taranaki. Those of you that possibly may know the area, we're uh, Half an hour drive from Hawera, about half an hour drive from Openeki, uh, or 15 yeah. minutes drive from Kaaponga. Uh, we're a Desol 8. We're a Desol 8 uh, primary school, and 75% to 95% of our students are involved in the dairy farming and the dairy industry. Um, the title of my presentation is Zero to 120 in Six Weeks: 
Um, just to put it in context with the school, in 2013, we had eight edu blogs um, running, which was the total online um, profile of the school. And in 2014, we've moved from having eight the previous year to having 120 student blogs and 10 class blogs. Um, the reason that we decided to make this shift in pedagogy um, came as a goal from the Board of Trustees to having our rural students connecting and collaborating locally and, and, and globally despite our location. Uh, we're extremely fortunate at the school that the Board of Trustees invested over $130,000 in digital resourcing and we're very, very proud of the fact that we've got 140 Apple devices um, for our school role, which is 190. Mm. We um, have created, in the last six weeks, individual blogs for all students in our school from year four to year eight, um, and we've got every class on board with having an on online blog. Um, as we mentioned, we had edu blogs last year, but in terms of accessibility and, and giving children opportunities, we wanted to move on to Blogger. Um, and we use Hapara dashboard yeah. with that. For PD for the staff, we had two days of intense PD in the holidays, mm -hmm. so two full days on working online, and we had all the students start at once. Um, and what we yeah. found is that the students have started driving the learning, which has been fantastic. We're also using online things such as Twitter to keep our professional development going in an up to date as possible. Um, we found already in the short time that we've been going that the communication and feedback with the parents and the community has been um, improving mm -hmm. greatly. We've also had our students networking and working overseas with other classes and students. Um, we found the students are engaged in, pu um, in the publishing and working online. Um, in six weeks we've had over 400 posts from our students and 20,000 page views of student work. So we're really excited about that and the potential that that's bringing. The students are learning and supporting each other and moving the learning forward and we've been quite surprised by how successful that's been in a short space of time. Just some um, links just, I'll put at the end of my presentation. Yes, Sonia. Yeah, I'm just we just lost the last the last two sound from you. Oh, so that's that's right. just share that last that oh um, we were just I just wanted to make the point that what we've discovered in the time we've been working that but the students have been driving the learning forward. You're coming in and out. You've got that? I yeah. can hear. Yeah, I so can hear all of that. Yeah, okay, no, that's okay, fine. Okay, then maybe it's our end. Just, just some links, just some links just, just to finish off. Uh, just some links to finish off um, just at the okay. end of my presentation. Now, the, all of these presentations are uh, Yeah, okay. Okay. Um, Justine, I'm going to skip you just to get your breath back because I know that you've been having a bit of trouble. Juliet, can we flick across to you? Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, you cut the mouth. Thanks for that. There he is, there. I'm, oh, he's turned himself off. I'll get you to have a good look at them when we get a bit of bandwidth back. Okay, Juliet, are you ready for us? Turn your sound on yeah. to Juliet. There we go, okay. it sounds on. And remember to turn it that. So here's Juliet. Yep, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Great, okay. Screen share. Do you all know Juliet? Anybody here knows Juliet? No? Follow her on Twitter. Okay, Juliet, off you go. Okay, I'm just going into my desktop now. So just give me a second. Drop it. Oh. Okay, so have you got their first slide now? You how to do this two weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, got the first slide up. And Kathy, get that timer okay. going, thanks. Excellent, I'll go. Kia okay, ora koutou. Okay, kia ora koutou. My name is Juliet Revel okay. and I lead e-learning at Mpora School in Hastings with Janine Maloney. I teach an incredible bunch of Year 2 learners and I feel very privileged to have been asked to share with you all today about kids yeah. education. NZ on behalf of um, the co-organisers in this virtual presentation for the Festival of Education. Kids in Chat NZ is a Twitter chat that New Zealand schools are able to take part in every week. The chat runs on Thursday mm -hmm. afternoon.
from Total 3 PE. Kids Ed Chat NZ has been running since Term 3 in 2012 when it was created by Pascal Dress. Pascal was inspired by Daniel Mybrow's Ed Chat NZ, um, which is a Twitter chat that enables New Zealand educators to connect and share ideas. Kids Ed Chat NZ gives um, Kiwi Kids an authentic audience to share their learning. Twitter and TweetDeck are our online tools. Classes create a Twitter account and ask to be added to the Kids Ed Chat New Zealand list. Class teachers use um, Hootsuite or TweetDeck to follow the chat each week. Creating a column where you follow the Kids Ed Chat um, list allows the children to see their tweets once they have been posted. Kids Ed Chat NZ has grown substantially in the last year. The Twitter account now has around 300 followers and approximately 20 to 30 classes take part in every chat. We communicate, we communicate information about our up and coming chats via the Kids Ed Chat New Zealand blog and of course by tweeting. We are innovating our content and recently we've begun to use flip learning in our chats. The biggest challenges that we've overcome so far have been finding the most suitable time for everyone. In the beginning our chat had a half an hour time frame. We found this was too short really to get into a topic in any depth. So um, we've extended the chat to an hour. The organisation of the chat is now shared between seven committed teachers who believe in using digital technologies to redefine the way that we teach. Stephen Baker was quoted in an Education Review article last year saying that the buzz and excitement from Kids Chat New Zealand is second to none and I know what he means. I love seeing that moment when kids see that their tweet has gone out to the world. There are robust connections happening inside and outside the classroom. It's truly authentic, key competency learning. I've seen the power of tuakane Tana in our chats. We often pair older and younger children when taking part and it's fantastic to see the children learn from each other. Kids Ed Chat New Zealand provides the children that participate with a powerful authentic learning process. The benefits of getting involved are numerous. Children are reading tweets, asking, answering questions, communicating with others and writing. Kids Ed Chat NZ provides a rich context for teaching positive digital citizenship for the, in the classroom. Teachers are able to use the chat as a vehicle to grow our kids into robust digital citizens. Um, the message that I'd like to convey to my colleagues is have a go, take a risk. Um, are you having trouble engaging your relative writers? Well try Kids Ed Chat NZ and use digital technologies to redefine the way you teach. Your kids will love you for it and on so many different levels. I found Kids Ed Chat NZ a powerful tool for engaging reluctant writers in discourse with other kids. Its impact is immediate and kids love seeing their tweet published online and their questions answered by other kids. Best of all, it's great mm. fun. And finally, here are some links um, to look into it further. Thanks for the opportunity to share, Sonia, and please feel free to contact me with any queries. Thanks, Juliet. Um, great for you sharing uh, this, what you've been doing with uh, kids, chat, kids in chat and set. Now, um, Juliet, um, sorry, if I can ask for Manu if you're up next. Manu, and then um, I might leave you to last, please, um, Justine. All right. That's all right. Manu. Yeah, I'm just setting myself up. Turn your camera off, please, Juliet. Yeah, can everyone see that? Cool. Just let me know when to go. First story. Just yeah, we can see you now, Manu. Okay, thanks. Um, okay. Um, and warm Pacifica greetings. 
Uh, my name is Manu Faya Simiatu and I work for Core Education as a Pacifica team leader um, and also as a Pacifica facilitator for the Te Tuatupu Consortium. Um, the interesting thing about working for Core is that uh, everyone is, yes sorry? Um, that everyone is based everywhere around New Zealand but our, our head office is actually in Christchurch. So I'll be talking to you today about blogging and I have my own blog called Manuscript. It's a bit of a play on my name and I use this as a reflection and a writing tool. Um, and there's my URL link there if you want to check out what I have to say. Um, the interesting thing about my blog is that I only just started this last year in November. My colleague Anthony Faitawa from Core Education helped me to set it up and mm -hmm. I wanted to have a space where I could share my thoughts and ideas I um, mean, it did take me a while to think about what it is that I wanted to say and share. And so I use my blog. Um, I'm really interested in music. I'm a former music teacher, head of performing arts, and I was also in charge of culture at my last school as a secondary okay. school teacher. And um, I use music, pop music, uh, to make connections with people. So I identify themes, mm -hmm. pop songs, uh, using elements of music, melody, rhythm, harmony, texture, form, mm -hmm. and I use them to create themes that I think will resonate with people um, in Aotearoa and possibly around the world. It was a bit of a shock to the system with the statistics. I wasn't really um, aware that people were interested from around the world. Um, I just checked my statistics this morning and um, total page views are up to about 6,700 I think almost. And um, it's just really interesting to know that people from everywhere were interested in what I had to share. Uh, share. Um, and some of the things that I do share are around identity, culture and languages. Um, as a Pacifica person in Aotearoa, even though I was born here, I'm interested in how the world sees me, how I see the world and my multiple worlds and realities. So um, I, I studied music at university, studied yeah. ecology, anthropology and education. So. I think because of all these different contexts and realities that I'm involved in, I'm really interested in how um, I can share that with people beyond face-to-face. -face. Yeah, I have what's called a manu mission, and um, they're kind of like three steps or tenets or principles that I live by, um, identifying like minds, so trying to find people that think like me or possibly don't, and we can share ideas, sharing that mission. Um, in terms of how you live your life and staying focused on um, success and, and inspiring others. So those are definitely three major things about my manu mission. And, there, and the word manu mission is about you know freeing your minds from slavery, I guess. So I'm really interested in that kind of aspect as well. I think I use the blog as a way to role model to students about empowering mm -hmm. students and that they too have valid opinions that need to be shared with everybody. And that picture was taken at Polyfest um, just uh, last week. And there are a few links there of my uh, professional profile at CORE, my master's research on giftedness in terms of celebrating gifted Pacifica students, my That's Twitter handle, time. and an interview last week on Tangata Pacifica about connecting mm -hmm. ASB Polyfest with... we lost your sound, Manu. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can hear her. Okay. So yeah, thank you for um, joining me, and I um, hope to see you all tonight at the Festival yeah, Education Dinner. That we're going in and out here. So. Yes. Um, thanks, Manu. We've, I'm sure that we've got questions too for you at the end. Um, can we pull up? So if you can turn your camera off, please, Manu. And can we have um, Emma, please? Now Emma, Emma might have a bit of trouble because she's trying something new with it. She's presenting with a Prezi presentation and, and if she has a crash then I can flick across to Justine while she fix it. But I know you won't Emma, everything will be fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Hi Emma. Have you, have you got my screen? Not yet. Oh, oh that's my fault. I haven't clicked on you. <laughs> okay, share your screen. Yeah, it's coming up now. Okay, great. Yeah, it's there now. Okay. Thanks, thanks Emma. Okay, kia ora koutou. My name is Emma Alala Swardale, a Year 6 teacher, team leader for oh. Years 4 to 6, and inquiry lead teacher for Sylvia Park Primary School. At Sylvia Park School, we care that our curriculum is based on tangible outcomes. 
If children don't leave with learning that they can see and continue to use in life outside of school, then our work has been for nothing. When we plan for our curriculum, we ensure that it is based and covers all of the curriculum areas in a cyclic nature so that our students are exposed to lots of different experiences. However, most importantly, it must reflect our community, the children that are in our school, where we are located, and things that are happening around us in New Zealand and the world. In short, we keep it real. We are constantly thinking about our diversity and about ensuring we hook our children in. I would like to share a few examples of this with you. In 2011, we were shocked at the low voter turnout in our area, and the need was easily identified for our team Term 4 inquiry. In the past, teachers had chosen the school leaders for the following year, and we realised that this needed to change if we were going to change the status quo. We launched an inquiry not only into what makes a good leader, but also into the processes and systems of electing leaders. The school was alive with the hustle and bustle of organisation, campaigning and questioning. It was incredible and the outcome was an election day where all students and staff voted for the head boy and girl for the next year using the student constructed voting papers. It was amazing to listen to the conviction of even the five year olds who could tell you who they were voting for and why. <laughs> In 2014, another obvious need was tackled. The increasing and unsafe traffic congestion at pick-up and drop-off times in the small cul-de-sac where our school is situated. Classes began by identifying problems and deterrents of using the other entrances. They asked lots of questions of outside and inside sources and worked together to come up with possible solutions. They developed test models and visual representations that they presented at our community consultation day. Members of the wider community were invited and asked to vote on the actions we should take. It was fantastic. The classes then took the most popular solution and put it into action. The council got on board and our outcomes have included a new zebra crossing, a change from diagonal to parallel parking, new calming treatments where there was none, and an alleyway getting a revamp, including new concrete and signage. For the students to see that they can make a positive change to their environment and be valued by outside organisations was incredible. If we really believe we are making a difference, then it's about ensuring our students leave us with the skills they need to become lifelong learners. And we do this through the key competencies. We do inquiry the way we do because we are providing the platform for student real life learning that will follow them into their next learning environments and through life. Thank you for listening and don't forget to keep it real. Oh, thanks Emma, they all clapped but I didn't have the microphone on. Sorry, <laughs> <I'm good. laughs> um, That's alright, you can do it again. I <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's better. <laughs> okay. Right, Emma's, Emma's going to do a magical thing shortly. All right, Justine, over to you. Turn your mic off to Emma, please. Yeah. Oh, Justine, you ready for us? Yep, I'm sure am. I'm here finally. Yeah. I shall just share my screen. Okay, and I will get started. Kia ora koutou, no mai, haere mai. Greetings to you all at the Festival of Education, joining us for Teach Me NZ, or watching us virtually now, or at some time that suits you. I am Justine Driver, the Deputy Principal at Pakaranga Heights School, and today I'd like to share with you Try Try Blogging. Always starting with why we do things at Pakaranga Heights, we look at our school vision of reaching new heights together. Blogging is a great digital tool to help engage our learners and our community. Brendan Spillane states, a vision without action is nothing more than a hallucination. So we took a bias for action and worked with staff to understand why blogging would be a good fit for us for our revised learning through digital technology strategy. Blogs are a great way for teachers to open up the walls of their classroom and share the learning that happens within our community. Blogs 
provide an authentic audience for students to have a voice and get feedback on their learning. Blogs have become a vehicle for teachers to promote digital citizenship and role model how to leave a positive digital footprint when making connections in an online environment. So, getting started for this whole school strategy, I set up blank templates like this for all 21 classrooms so that the school owned the blog and the teacher was the user owner just for the year. This way, I could ensure the elements that we wanted to use were featured on each blog, hence the school logo for branding, a subscription gadget, and the reserved HTML gadgets ready for personalization. Then, the staff personalized their blogs along with the students having input and added their embedding codes in for the hit counters and the world map to show students where in the world their readers came from. Staff soon added labels so parents could quickly identify if their child had contributed to the blog. So staff began blogging with their students. Our expectations were very clear that there was a minimum of one blog post a week. To maintain momentum, we had a weekly smackdown, a collaborative Google presentation that was shared at our Monday morning briefing so staff could contribute and share ideas on what was working well on their blogs. At the end of the first term of blogging, I thought I'd do a why we were blogging and the benefits, but it just wasn't happening. Hence, Try Blogging was born, an adaptation of the successful quad blogging created by Deputy Mitchell. So trios were set up for an internal Try Blogging challenge, where each week one class of the trio were highlighted to be viewed and read, while the other two classes made comments on the focus blog. After the second week of the Try Blogging challenge, the results were astounding. As a collective, there was a 36% increase in blog posts and a 133% increase in commenting, showing that this was a successful strategy to employ. At Pakaranga Heights, we've got a clear vision of why we believe blogging will help us reach new heights together for our students, learning and our community. The expectations have been very clear from the start and implementing tri -blog the Tri Blogging Challenge has kept a consistent focus on using blogging as a tool for our learning and our vision. Tri Blogging has created habits of sharing learning, making connections and commenting internally within our school. Our next step is to encourage staff to make connections across other schools in New Zealand and globally. So try Tri Blogging. Join us at Pakaranga Heights School NZ Class Blogs and leave us a comment. Thank you. Okay. That's it. <laughs> Kia ora koutou. You were great, even with all those nerves. Oh, thank you fantastic. very much. That was fantastic. Thanks so much. That's okay. Sonia, can you and your audience live hear me? I think she must have lost us. Justine, I'm not sure about Newmarket, but I know they've been watching the feed um, overseas in a couple of countries. It's been working in Dunedin, so. Mm. Fantastic. Well, um, after a lot of nerves and things finally getting right with my computer, I love technical challenges. Um, it can still work doing try blogging, so, and Google Hangouts. I think we've lost them, eh? And I think we have Sonia back. They are muted at the moment, so maybe they need to unmute first. I'm going to laugh in. Unmute, Sonia. This Somebody sent her a tweet. I'd like to say how wonderful all the presentations have been, even though I've now got a new tag, Rattlesnake. You have actually done a great job and not been too phased when I've actually rung my little bell. Well done. Thank you, Kathy. Was it, Kathy, that wasn't an actual bell, was it, surely? Perhaps 
perhaps if we all turn our cameras back on, then Sonia can see us. Sonia, we can see you. So what's going live? <laughs> no, no, you crack me up. <laughs> We must have used up all their bandwidth. Nothing left for Auckland now. It's just us up in the rural areas. <laughs> I love what Manu's doing. Go, Manu. <laughs> Manu, speak and then she'll hear you. Manu, turn on your mic. Oh, yeah, we can't hear you, Sonia. Visual. <laughs> What's this UDR, Monica? What was that? UDL in action. Yes, that's right. There we are. We are UDL in action. I, I don't know if Sonia can hear us yet, but I did want to say, and I just messaged it, she just did a fantastic job putting this all together, and I really appreciated the, the help that she gave, certainly me, and it was fantastic. And it's, those of you that haven't been following the Twitter feed, they've been watching us in Dunedin, um, there was a couple of tweets that went out from Ireland, I saw one from England as well. Everybody, everybody, oh. I, just ran, I just ran to see Sonia. And Sonia said, oops, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> but she wanted to say, um, oh, they all gave us a clap that I should pass on. Hold on. There you go. And um, they, um, they loved it. It was great. And they're very sorry that they lost us all. I'm just amazed that she's able to do this following online and in front of an audience plus manage it all. Truly amazing. That's uh, right. Pretty and, cool. um, pretty cool. it is such a, it's such a cool thing to have um, this format.